Hello and good evening, everyone. This is French River Lutheran Church's Lenten Services. Uh, today is the third Wednesday of Lent. Uh, we'd like to welcome any friends, visitors, or guests who have gathered with us here online or are watching with us. Um, we are glad to have you with us. Um, as we have said the previous weeks, our Lenten services are focused around uh, scripture and also poetry of Mary Oliver, and we are continuing that today. Uh, we'd like to give a thanks for Phil Jensen, uh, Rich Hogue, and uh, David Fiebiger um, for helping us out with this today, uh, being my helpers and assistants today to make sure that we can have this for all of you to enjoy and find a contemplative space uh, during your Lenten journey at home and wherever you are. All right, let us begin our service today with our scripture for the day. Scripture today is from the Gospel according to John, the second chapter, verses 13 through 25. The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs of what he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone, for he, knew, for he himself knew what was in everyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our poem for today by Mary Oliver. If you are following along at home, uh, the, all the poems have been scanned in and can be found in the documents area of uh, our webpage. Um, and you can download those and follow along with us or just listen and contemplate these words in your heart. Today's poem is Where Does the Temple Begin and Where Does It End? There are things you can't reach, but you can reach out to them all day long. The wind, the bird flying away, the idea of God. And it can keep you busy as anything else and happier. The 
the snake slides away, the fish jumps, like a little lily, out of the water and back in. The goldfinches sing from the unreachable top of the tree. I look morning and night, and I'm never done looking. Looking, I mean, without standing around, but standing around as though with your arms open, and thinking maybe some will come, some shining coil of wind or a few leaves from an old tree. They are all in this too. And I will tell you the truth. Everything in the world comes, at least closer and quarterly, like the nibbling tinsel-eyed fish, the unlooping snake, like goldfinches, little dolls of gold flooding around the corner of the sky of God, the blue air. Now today, looking at or hearing the scripture reading of Jesus in the temple, which a lot of us uh, probably know because it's one of his more famous known stories uh, of flipping tables over, and then of hearing Mary Oliver's uh, description of where the temple ends and the temple begins. It's a different kind of idea to look at Jesus, this person who we uh, know to be the son of God, being so angry, as we know him to be such a pacifist and not someone to really react so aggressively. But Jesus is full of righteous anger in this text. And if you're paying attention, this was the gospel text last Sunday. Animals are in the temple. They're pooping on the floor. And but the thing that bothers him more is that the people are not treating it as holy ground for people to have holy experiences and meet God. They are using it for their own selfish gain and reward. Yes, as I said on Sunday, uh, they are trading uh, animals for sacrificial uh, atonement. It is a way that we used to do this, like in our historical uh, growth of being followers of God, of Yahweh. Uh, animals used to be slaughtered and put on the altar. But the temple of God is truly what uh, is, the confusion of what the temple of God is really what's bugging Jesus. He talks about himself as the temple of God, about it breaking him, the, uh, about society breaking down the temple, and in three days it will be risen back up again. Of course, when they hear this, they think he is, off his rocker that he's maybe drunk a little wine before coming to the marketplace but he is explaining the different idea that humans have a hard time wrapping their heads around that a temple doesn't always have to be a structure he himself is the temple of god he's explaining about the resurrection of himself his body however mary oliver's poem is connecting us back into something a little different the temple of the world of around us, an altar in the world. Not just our buildings of worship, not of just seeing God in this place, but in everywhere places around us. We think about the land that we are all living on right now and one of the biggest uh, freshwater lakes in the world and how careful we are to protect it and take care of it. The animals, uh, the the, cons- <clears throat> the, uh, you know, the consecration of uh, being good stewards of the earth. And when we wreck this land and the holy actions to our neighbors and strangers of this life, how does it hold up in our work of being called to be stewards of creation, of caring for the neighbor, of that idea of resurrection that can pull us back into life? Sacred ground and sacred soil is all around us and inside of us. And we need to be careful with its tending and its use. When we believe in the idea of the Trinity, we have God the Father, we have God the, or God the Son, or Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, when God and the, in Christ Jesus comes back for the resurrection, We believe in the breath of the holy coming into us of his life. 
when we come into each other's life, we have to think about how we care for holy spaces, both common and uncommon, those holy altars in the world around us and in our lives of faith. Now, we talked about uh, an action that you can do. How can I like connect myself into the world, not just in this church building, but also in the world? And in a pandemic, we've kind of gotten an idea of how to do that, you know, because a lot of us haven't been able to be in this building. But a simple way is perhaps lighting a candle in your home. This week, um, as a sign of courage to be, see, and to know more clearly the holiness of creation around us. In creation, care this week, take a walk around your neighborhood or your land to see what you are blessed with and take time to pick up garbage or things that may cause harm to the land. In the holy ground of our fellow persons, make a plan to be able to have hard conversations with great love with people. Explain to people that even in the midst of uh, differences, it's okay to tend the soil to understand that maybe you got to turn something over to make that soil more fruitful and also question yourselves when you go and have those hard conversations is your anger righteous or is it shallow and self-serving in its purpose don't just flip the tables because you are mad but have a good reason and explanation as to why it is important to you Um, to tend that soil and to help something new grow. All right. Now we continue on with our intercessory prayer that we've been speaking every, uh, or singing every week so far. Watch, O Lord. Uh, Phil and I will uh, sing this together today, Um, but follow along if you would like, or just hum along. And uh, think of those prayers in your heart and mind that you need to care for this week as you hear these words. Watch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and say, Oh, Lord, with all those. 
before we go and do a closing prayer for today, I would like to invite you all, um, since we are not meeting in person, there's offer, often an offertory or a time to give to the church uh, for the many missions that are done here. However, um, obviously because of pandemic, we are not doing that. So I would like to lift up different ways that you can give. You can give in person on Sunday mornings. There's an offering um, plate that is in the back of the church that is uh, taken care of. Uh, you can also use the drop box, which is outside um, under the canopy over here. Uh, it's very secure. Uh, you can give online. And, uh, or you can give by mail. And so we would appreciate any form uh, to help uh, keep our mission uh, here that we've done for so many places and spaces uh, uh, to be able to continue. All right, receive the prayer uh, as you go on your way as a form of blessing and of courage. God of justice, help us to protect the vulnerable with wisdom and audacity. Show us your true temple. Amen.